Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Lips Reptiles, and today I got my hose in my hand, and I'm wearing khakis, which you've probably never seen before, or very rare that I would wear something like this, and boots, and not tennis shoes, and shorts, or sweatpants, or jeans. But, if you're on Patreon, when we go over and do that video, I'll tell you why I'm wearing khakis today. There's actually a good reason for it, at least I think so. But we are here to set up some new baby snakes. So what we have done, we are going to set up some of our carpet pythons. Now, we have already set up some, but these are the stragglers. Most of these are already shed out, and the ones that haven't, they will finish up in here. So again, if you watch the video, we talk about how we set these up. We set up some sticks, it's low perch, high perch. This low perch will be what's on top of the heat. If they want to use it, we will keep some toilet paper rolls, things like that, throwing over a little place to them to hide. Uh, so far, we've set up four of these that have been attempted to be fed, not including these guys. Out of those four, three of them have eaten. So I'm pretty happy with what we're doing. Uh, it's a good sign. So what we'll do now is we'll just give us some moisture. Just a little moisture. Just a little moisture. And of course, this is Reptile Prime, so it's going to soak up water like a sponge. So you know, it looks like I'm putting a ton in there. I'm really not. Plus, the sprayers on them very heavy. And we'll come over here and do the same thing. And just do a little moisture. A little moisture. Isn't this fun? Woo! You know, if I was growing up as a kid, and I ever had the hose turned on in the house, I'm pretty sure I would have gotten beat with said hose. So it's really fun as an adult that I can run a hose in the house and nobody tries to beat me with it. I wasn't abused as a child, I promise. Maybe a little. No, I'm kidding. No abuse in my family. All right, so we'll get that out the way. And now we're going to show you the ones that are in here so you get a chance to see them. We will end up having to put a lid on them when I carry them over. Sometimes these things try to dart out everywhere. So having something that when you're walking it, if you're not doing it right in there, you can put that on top to put this up is actually a really good idea. So let's get ready. Let's grab a carpet python here. First one to volunteer will be you. Well, not you. Both of you. <laughs> So here's two of them. Really? Come on, guys. You guys are like in a love knot. Let's not do that. So what we'll do, hopefully one of them will stay in there. See what I'm talking about? They crawl out. They're a pain in the butt. <laughs> Let me just see this guy. We'll do these one at a time. We'll see you again in a second, I promise, dude. There we go. So we got him in there. We'll go ahead and make a label. Now, that one is not a jag, so it's just going to be a carpet coastal cross is what you're going to be seeing there, which is kind of neat, really. So these will all be 2102 because they're the last clutch of 2020. I actually have some 21, so I'll be clutch 01. So 2102, this one will be number whoop, five. If you ever wonder how I do those labels, that's how we do it. And we're just going to say jungle. Now, it's really not a pure jungle. Okay, it's not, I know that, so it's not a problem. It's a jungle coastal cross. The reason for the coastal is because we did have some, uh, we have a jack. So these are also all jack sips. So let me go put this one up. I'll be right back in here to share the next one with you. Come on, little buddy. You're going to go to your new home. Kurt, stop looking at my butt. No, I'm kidding. He's got no choice right now because I'm filming this. So he just slides in there like that. We keep this, pop the label on. The one bad thing, oh, <laughs> so I had this weird smell in here. I couldn't find it for the life of me. I've been checking. It's really been driving me nuts. I just found it. I realized I stuck a dead rodent up there and forgot about it. <laughs> Woo! That's what it is. That's what I'm smelling. We'll get rid of that here in a little while. So then you want to come back out again. So again, this will be more of the same, but you can really kind of see their length. They're very thin. Uh, lengthwise is pretty good though. Look at that tail prehensile. These are really neat snakes. If you've never had carpets, uh, they're pretty awesome. This is the first time I've ever hatched them. Only the second time I've ever uh, attempted really breeding them. The first time we had retained eggs that were all bad. And actually, since the mother couldn't pass them, it, it killed her, unfortunately. But really neat. Wear them like jewelry. And they like to hold on there. Uh, now, in my experience, juvenile carpets tend to be very, very nippy. But so far, these guys have been just a pleasure. Now, I don't think they're going to stay that way. I think they may get nippy. The reason I say that is because 
the juvenile carpets, it's not that these are captive bred, so that makes them nice. It's just, I haven't got enough age to be jerks yet. Every carpet you're going to run across, for the most part, is going to be captive bred. That's because they cut uh, imports off years and years and years ago, like I want to say sometime in the 70s. Therefore, you cannot get them any other way. Personally, I don't mind that. It certainly slows down new morphs coming in. I mean, honestly, they should pretty much put a stop to new morphs coming in, but it doesn't. Get in there, buddy. But it doesn't put a full stop to it because things still have a way of working their way over. Uh, and, of course, they do show up in captivity as well, you know. But, you know, when it comes to, like, ball pythons, this is going to sound kind of soapboxy. But I am not sure why we import as many as we do. I wish we'd get down to where we were only important things that were very interesting. And we would not be importing in an asshole of wild-caught ball pythons that are normals. They don't do as well in captivity. And on top of that, <laughs> I have another ball of snakes. On top of that, uh, there's probably not a need, really. So, now when you separate these guys, you do want to take your time. Because their tails are very delicate. So I'm going to let them separate themselves. I'm not really trying to force the issue. Just like that. Actually, I actually have somebody here, so I'll hand this over to my buddy Jeff, who came over to see these guys along with our new Viper. Now, this one is what's called a JAG. So the JAG stands for Jaguar. It's the pattern in it. It is a recessive, or not a recessive, sorry. It's an incomplete dominant trait that came out of coastal, hence why all these have coastal in it. This is what their father was in Kronos. Now, you'll just see it in this repeating pattern. So it's going to end up having a lot of green and a lot of yellow. Their color brightens with age. JAG, though, you do not ever want to breed JAG to JAG. JAG to JAG will make a leucistic uh, carpet python, which sounds really badass, but the problem is they all die. So JAG to JAG, not a good pairing. The other thing with JAG is it kind of has, has a little bit of the spider-like stuff going on that you see in ball pythons. However, as you can see, this thing does pretty good. So does the other one. We had two JAGs out of the entire clutch, which, you know, I'll take. Uh, and they both seem to be pretty healthy. They both not, they don't show a lot of neuro. You will get some JAGs that have, have neuro. Uh, my my father, not my father, but the father to this clutch, has been a wonderful jag. He shows no signs of neuro. Uh, and again, I think part of it's just outcrossings that's need, that is needed. If I wanted to make jags, and this is why I won't be keeping any of these, I would never take and like keep one of these and breed a jag to it, nor would I keep a sibling like what Jeff is holding and breed my jag male to that, even if it's female, because I don't want to go jag to a sibling. To make strong stuff like this, if you have any weaknesses and things, Outcross, 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 outcross. With spiders, it's not the answer. Here, could it be? I don't know. There's people smarter than me on carpets that could probably say if that would be beneficial or not, but it definitely isn't going to hurt. So you definitely want to outcross. Beautiful, beautiful creatures. And one thing, too, on animals where there's been no importation, the downside of that is when you get things like this, people tend to interbreed them a lot because you don't have the new blood coming in. And so uh, that could be part of your issue why you get some of those things. If you're in doubt, there's some really good information out there dealing with colubrids where they have some of those issues. And even there, you can see on the perch, he's not wobbly at all. He does wonderful. The first jag is one of the ones that ate. Holy cow, you got a weird head pattern. I just kind of noticed it's, I'm just going to leave that alone. So we put this back on there, take him and put him up as soon as we make him a label. So on here, we just simply... Change that to 210206, oh, 07, so number 7. And after jungle, we'll get rid of that and just write jag. But that tells me everything I need to know. Now, obviously, I would have loved to have had more of those jags, but uh, it's only because I think they're pretty. There's not, this isn't going to be like some huge, huge money clutch. I mean, I'll make more money on most of my ball python clutches than I will on any of these. But they're just cool. This is like a big cool thing. And sometimes you do stuff not for how much money it's going to make you, but for how cool you think it is. And when I got back into having reptiles after divorce number one, uh, hopefully the last divorce, ah, I got my label. It was a carpet python jag that I got. <laughs> so for me to now be reproducing those 
is truly bringing things kind of full circle, right? So I'm really, really excited about that. It makes me very happy. All right, guys, last one for you to see. Should probably grab the lid. Jeff, if you want to go ahead and stick it in there for me. And this is going to be another sib, which will be a Coastal Jungle Cross. As you can see, he's wearing it like jewelry. We'll see how he does getting it off his hand. Ha, ha, ha. Welcome to my world. And I'll tell you, we'll do a video soon when we kind of update how these are all doing. And we'll show both parents to give you an idea of what they may look like. I say may because it's hard to tell. Come on, you little monkey. Get in there. But see how they hold on? That is the coolest thing. So we'll put that lid on there. Otherwise, I'm having that same fight Jeff just had the entire way while I'm trying to carry it and not spill a water dish. It's a real pain in the butt. All right, guys. So that was the last one. We did only have eight. And we'd already set up the other ones previous. So what I want to know now is, Kurt, do you have any questions? I will be selling these, yes. I have, so you know, and again, we're going to make them available first on Patreon, like always. And I will be honest, guys, from what I've been hearing, if I was a guessing man, I'm going to tell you, if you're not on Patreon and you want one of these, you are uh, likely fucked, okay? I'll just be blunt. That is a situation. There's been a lot of people waiting on these, which is awesome. I've been talking about it for years. It's taken me this long, and... I don't think they're going to make it off Patreon. Uh, I mean, I really don't think they will. I could be wrong, man. Maybe Patreon didn't buy any of them and they're setting there for everybody. But I'll be honest, if you really want one, you should look at signing up. And, and there's other benefits to it besides just buying snakes from us. It's a, it's a new sales form we're using for everybody. So you can buy from people that you get to know. That they can sell to people they get to know, which is really cool. Uh, it's actually hurt my sales a little bit doing that. But it's awesome because we're building a sales community of people that can that can work together and that's what it's all about so you should definitely check it out it's worth your five bucks just to make safe sales hell you sell one snake on there or you buy one snake and don't get scammed it paid for the entire year so it's definitely a worthwhile endeavor anything else you want to add no all right guys thanks for watching we'll see you next time